The Godfather, The Godfather Part 2, Apocalypse Now. <laughs> Captain EO. What do all these classic films have in common? They were all directed by the great Francis Ford Coppola. But guess what else he produces? He produces wine. And we're here at Ingle Nook Vineyard. And this is in Napa Valley wine country, and we're about to visit it. Are you kidding me? Let's see what Francis is up to. Now the Coppolas have been producing wine for years. Uh, Francis bought this property in 1975. He bought 150 acres. And then in 2011, he said, screw it, I'm buying the name Inglenook. And Inglenook, as you know, is everywhere. Everyone's drinking Inglenook, including your auntie and your grandma and your cousin Bertha. But just stepping onto this property, I mean, already it is so beautiful. And best of all, it's fall time. The most important house ever built. I'm gonna have me some, uh some uh, wine pretty soon here. Hey, I know that guy. Look at this guy, look at this guy's life. Making movies, making wine, movies about Napoleon and fedoras and beards and... Look at this, look at, look at, look at the whole family. The family dynasty, huh? Oh, Sophia, she's so beautiful. There's August, that's the dad. There's Nick Cage. Oh, here's the Oscar for Nina Rota's score for The Godfather. Notes, Eleanor Coppola, that's a great book. Look at the Coppola dynasty. Do they get free pours around here? I can only imagine. Big, giant, beautiful choo-choo train models. What does this have to do with anything? Oh, this is the Archimedes Coppola. He has his own trains too? Francis, you are too much, man. Well, I was right about 1975, but I was wrong about the acreage. It was 1,560 acres, not 150 acres. <laughs> I would fail the uh, Coppola Trivial Pursuit game. Thank you, sir. Here you go. Yes, it is a wine tour. Let me find a few more people. I'm going to be spending a good bit of time talking about the history of the estate. You, this is one of the most historic, uh, I think it's the grandest chateau in the valley. And you really don't appreciate the Chateau unless you know some of the history. And at the end of the tour, we do have a sit-down tasting, three of our reds paired with cheese. And I really encourage questions. The tours are a lot more fun for me if there is some interaction and some conversation. But if it's questions about the history of the estate or about the Coppolas, I pretty much always say I'll get to that. I do try to be very thorough. Before we get started, where are you all from? Captain Niebaum's Tasting Room. There he is right there with the beard of the Niebaum Coppola connection. This is one of the oldest tasting rooms in Napa Valley. Now, darling, why would you wear these shoes? Did you not know we were going on a hike? You didn't know we were hiking up no, the mountain? No, I didn't. <laughs> but you know what? You got true grit, and I applaud you. Thank you. So Bill is our tour guide, by the way. Yeah. He's very awesome, very knowledgeable. You can kind of tell he diffused all the Coppola questions. He's like, if you want to ask about, you know, Coppola orgies or whatnot, I'm not here to answer those questions. Getting some really awesome history about the property here. And out there, if you can see, that is the Coppola home. That is a Victorian mansion out there where the Coppolas lived. The children were raised here. Uh, Francis came out here in 75 and he's been here ever since. And he has spent most of his wine career trying to bring quality back to the name Inglenook. And he has succeeded. So far the stuff is great. So I'm loving the guy from Kentucky with the big old nose hair. And he's not drinking any wine but he just keeps wanting to know about are you fertilizing them grapes? What kind of poo you got on them grapes? What kind of fertilizer you got on them grapes? Hi, I'm Francis Coppola, and this is my beautiful fountain overlooking my valley of grapes. What's your favorite kind of wine, Bill? I've gotten used to big cabs. Big cabs? Yes, well, the two wineries I've worked at, well, Napa Valley, this, this is right. cab country. Yeah. Why did you choose to come to Napa Valley? Um, I used to visit my brother, and uh, we did a day trip up here. Um, you fell in love with it. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can see that dude's wiener. Uh, the next one that I'm going to pour is our 2011 Inglenook Cabernet Sauvignon. This is made in the tradition of John Daniel. He called his Cabernet Cass Cabernet. 
It does still say cask here. This is 85% Cabernet Sauvignon, 12% Cabernet Franc, and 3% Merlot. If you enjoy Cab Franc, I think it's very prominent in this wine. Um, I think you'll appreciate this wine. We grow a lot of the same grapes here that they grow in Bordeaux. Spring, a very it's cool growing season. Philippe um, and Cabernet Sauvignon is a late ripening grape. People were delaying harvest. <laughs> well, I learned a hell of a lot today. Uh, what an amazing story. The, the rise of Inglenook, the fall of Inglenook, the rebirth of Inglenook. Seriously, Inglenook has been like the butt of jokes for so long, but we just had an extraordinary tasting, and Bill the host was great, and we got a great tour, and we learned all about the Coppolas, and all about Captain Niebaum, and all about the Rubicon. Fascinating stuff, and now, what do I have? I've got some Inglenook extra virgin olive oil, I've got a baguette, I'm feeling very Italian. Oh, I think I'm gonna go chill out, pass out in the grass, drink a ton of wine, have some bread and some oil, and wait until Coppola's flunkies come and kick me off the property. What do you think, honey? Why not? Why not? <laughs> <laughs>